Hey, it's Larry Nimmer. I'm here at the Conrad Murray trial in downtown Los Angeles. Let's look at what some people have to say. To all Michael Jackson fans, everybody just really needs to stay strong, keep the hope, and know that um, one way or the other, justice is being sought out here in these courts. Uh, Carlene, yes. uh, tell me about the assignment you have for CNN. Hey, CNN International gave me a camera to be an eye reporter for them throughout the trial. So I take the camera around 24-7, doing interviews during the trial, um, taping myself and my thoughts about what's happening during the day at trial, and also taking it around to show uh, the viewers, international viewers, what I do when I'm not at the trial. You know, running errands, going to therapy. Thursday I'll go to Elizabeth Taylor's um, viewing of all her jewels and clothing for her auction in December. So I'll take pictures of that. <laughs> and uh, why did they choose you to do this? I have no idea why, why are, I was are chosen. You, uh, is I, that you're an accomplished, attractive lady? It could be. <laughs> well, on, I was in the courtroom for jury selection, one of three or four public that was, um, got the ticket to go in for jury selection the Friday before the trial. And I happened to be sitting in between um, the C uh, in session, Beth Karras and her producer, and we're trading notes back and forth. Well, what do you do for a living? I am, currently I'm disabled. I was an accountant. I have lupus, so I just crashed at work. Mm -hmm. Did Michael have lupus? Michael sure did have lupus, and that's why I understand why Michael couldn't sleep at night, because insomnia is a major symptom of lupus. And I have to take a pill myself to sleep at night so I can imagine what Michael had to go through after hours and hours of high energy intensity dancing and having to come down from that and try to get some rest. It's virtually impossible. Have you watched any of the other media and do you have any thoughts about how they're covering the trial? Well, I ha I've watched a little bit and I'm about Jane Velez Mitchell and Nancy Grace. They, they skewered Michael in 2005 and now it seems like they're on his side during his uh, death trial. And I just really have a problem with that because part of the reason Michael couldn't sleep was probably because of them, them skewering him in the media. And I, I think they're doing it now just for ratings. Nancy Grace is on Dancing with the Stars, she needs votes. Jane Velez just needs some ratings because she's low on the totem pole at HLN. My thoughts. And I really think Michael completely vindicated himself. Um, didn't like it that Conrad Murray taped him on May the 10th while he was in an altered state. But the fact that he did and the information that came out on that tape, I feel it completely vindicates Michael from any wrongdoing in the past because in an altered state, you can't pretend to be someone else. And he spoke about um, building the children's hospital and helping the children of the world and the children that didn't have any mothers. He wanted to help the children. He never, ever spoke about sleeping with children or wanting to do anything bad to them. And I feel like it completely vindicated Michael hearing that audio of his voice from his mouth and from his heart. It is nice to see though, isn't it, that Michael is thought of better now that he's dead. It's too sad that he had to die for it to happen. It seems to me that this is it, and this trial are helping, and, and other things maybe, and his kids are helping to rehabilitate Michael. What do you think? Yeah, it's helping to cement his legacy in a positive way. And seeing his kids, like at the tribute concert, wear like different incarnations of his his famous outfits, Paris in the thriller jacket, you know, um, Prince in the bad outfit, and um, blanket with smooth criminal. I thought that was really, really neat. <laughs> what are your thoughts when you're in the courtroom of, of the mood or the dynamics or anything about it, the judge, the different attorneys? Well, my thoughts in the courtroom last week weren't that good. <laughs> um, I was just very, very angry at hearing um, Conrad Murray's audio, audio of his interview with the LAPD. Um, he told 
numerous, numerous lies. Um, one being in the emergency room, he told the emergency room doctors that he had no concept of time and did not have a watch. But surprisingly, a day later, talking to the LAPD detectives, he was throwing out times and measurements and all sorts of things that we didn't know um, that he told the emergency room doctors he didn't have. And him saying that Miss Catherine, to be, for the, the hospital personnel to be delicate with, with Miss Catherine because she has a heart condition too when they're breaking the news of Michael's death to her. Well, in the courtroom, Miss Catherine made some sort of um, body language movement that indicated she did not have a heart condition and that she was kind of upset that Conrad Murray would even say that. And just him saying that whenever the kids were ill, they would call for Dr. Murray, and him saying that Michael wanted to be, um, Michael wanted him with him forever, and that Michael was gonna make him the director of a children's hospital. Um, he was just patting himself on the back a little bit too much. And I'm glad that the detective said, now let's get back to the propofol. <laughs> That's good. Um, do you think it, the judge is doing a fair job? I think Judge Pastor is terrific. I think he's a fair judge. He sees everything, and I think that's the best judge um, to be on this case. He's fair all around. What, what about the, uh, the prosecutor, the main guy? David Walgren, he's hot. <laughs> he has a Facebook page that says David Walgren is hot. I think he's very good. I think him and Deborah Brazil, they dot all their I's and cross all their T's. And they've gone about this in a systematic manner and they're doing a really, really good job. And what about the defense attorneys? They're boring. Anytime Chernoff gets, stands up and starts talking and Flanagan starts talking, everyone starts falling asleep. I don't know if it's just, it probably is just them. Um, you're not prejudiced, are you? No, not at all. <laughs> I just, I mean, <laughs> Walgren is dynamic. Brazil is dynamic. You actually want to listen to them. Flanagan and Chernoff, you don't even know what path they're going down. You're trying to listen to them to see what, what, where their line of questioning is leading, and you still can't tell. Uh, and what about the jury? Have you followed any of the jurors? Do you have any feeling of how they're reacting? The jury is kind of hard to read them. They're kind of poker face, just like Conrad Murray is. You can't read him either, except for the times he wipes his eye. Okay, well, thanks for your thoughts. Huh? Do, do you want to give any contact info? Uh, I don't know that you'd want to, but uh, sure. go, go ahead. My cell number? Well, well, like, if people watch this interview, would you want to give an email address or a website so that they could contact oh. you? Follow me on Twitter at KSST. Thanks. <laughs> now tell me again, what, what's the deal with the Chinese fan? The Keen Zhang. I've been friends with Keen Zhang, who's the head of the Michael Jackson fan club in China, which is the largest Michael Jackson fan club in the world. They have over a million followers. And I've been in touch with him for the last two years or so on Facebook. And he sent me an email and asked me to get a, a book, a book, a Jermaine's book, autographed by Jermaine, so I have that to send back to him. And last night I got an email asking me to get a picture of the banner that's flying over today, which is from the fans of China, and it says, China demands justice. So I got a still shot and I'm going to send it to King. Keen's been over here once or twice, I think, and he's actually a reporter in China. Oh, that's cool. He's a reporter in China. Is he also an MJ fan? Yes, he's a head, he's a president of the Michael Jackson fan club in China. And he's big. In, they're, he's, Michael's big in China. Yes, huge. <laughs> that's funny. Uh, is there any problem sending stuff back and forth to China? Do you know? I don't know yet because this is going to be my first time. <laughs> Oh. I don't think it'll be a problem for a book. Okay, thanks, Carly. Thank you. Oh, hey, Majestic. You got something to say? Cool. Uh, let me get it going here.
got it ready, huh? Hot off the press. Majestic, hot off the press. This is Majestic Magnificent here with a beautiful girl who's a big fan of Micah. She's been coming to court every day, every day supporting Micah in the courtroom, supporting Michael. And uh, I just want to thank her for coming out and supporting the Jackson family. She's madly in love with me, but won't admit it. But you know, I'm not like that. You know, I'm like, I have to date at least five or six years. You know, walk off the camera in a man's show. You just walk off the camera. Get over there. And tell your name. Tell your name. Melanie Goodman. And she is a big, big fan of Michael Jackson. And what do you do? Are you an uh, actress or? No, I'm, I'm a grad student and a nanny. Oh, nice. You live here in LA? I thought she was here. Okay. Yes. Now you got it. Okay. Thanks, Larry. I have to leave, though, actually. Okay. But thank you. Are you Thanks here, Larry? Larry? Yeah, I'm Larry. Okay, I'm Melanie. Nice, nice to, to see you. you. I think I sent you a message asking about the times to come in the morning. Oh, did you? Yeah, yeah I think I remember so that. Thank you so much. Sure. Yeah, thank yeah. you for that. He's a character, huh? Yes. Thank you. See you on the news. Take 17. Pada pada boom. Uh, hi, it's Larry Nimmer. It's uh, about day 10 of the Conrad Murray trial. Today there were some pictures of uh, Michael Jackson dead that the uh, coroner was talking about. And now I see on a Facebook post that just happened from Julia Merriweather, it says, MJ fans around the world report this bastard at Triangle Love One on Twitter. He's sending Paris and Prince autopsy photos of MJ, helping report this monster. So people are on the alert for Michael's kids and their Twitter life. And uh, one more person, Julia Merriweather, looking out for them. We live in a new age of media and accessibility and instant, uh, instant dissemination and it's crazy. This has been Larry Nimmer at the Conrad Murray trial. A lot of sounds here and a lot of images there. This has been Larry Nimmer in downtown Los Angeles at the Conrad Murray trial. We'll see you next time. Cue the pretty music. Well, hello. This has been Larry Nimmer in downtown Los Angeles at the Conrad Murray trial. This has been Larry Nimmer, downtown Los Angeles, Conrad Murray trial. I'm trying to lose that sound. Well, this has been... <coughs> this has been... <laughs> So hi, you are and what's going on? I'm Pearl Jr. with MichaelJacksonInsider.com and Elbow Grease Productions. And uh, we're in week three of the People vs. Conrad Murray trial. And, and where are we right now? And we are, we are at the Criminal Courts Building downtown LA on the 12th floor, the media floor. And you're credentialed media for this, right? Yes, I am credentialed media for this, yes. Are we rolling? Yeah, we're rolling now. So Pearl Jr., um, when you were watching the evidence in court, um, are you looking for discrepancies to maybe prove that Michael's still alive? Is that part of what you're looking for? I'm looking for the truth. Um, I'm looking for whatever I can find to draw some kind of conclusion to this maze that we're all in. The world is in a maze of figuring out if Dr. Murray is responsible for the death of Michael Jackson or is he just a doctor that helped him and got caught holding the bag and the bag is the death of Michael Jackson or are the believers the people who think Michael's not dead, are they correct? So it's a big maze and I'm here trying to soak up as much information as possible so that I can draw some kind of logical, reasonable conclusion. Oh, um, I saw one of the recent videos you posted and um, it, it's interesting how you have a lot of dramatic mu music to go along with it. 
in a way it felt like a tabloid thing, but it's your own style of thing. Do you have any thoughts about your style? Um, well, Michael uh, likes scary music. We saw him liking scary things from, you know, the 80s, early 80s with Thriller all the way to Ghost, which is one of his most recent long music videos that he did. So yeah. he really liked uh, scary music. So we figured since this is a mystery, uh, that we would encompass some type of airy feel of suspense. Uh, but does it possibly make it less neutral, less objective by adding music that makes it look like something mysterious is happening? Um, it is mysterious. Okay. Okay. That's a good way to think about uh, it. It is mysterious <laughs> because we don't know if Dr. Murray's responsible. We don't know if Michael's responsible. We don't know if this is all a hoax. We don't know yet. We're trying to figure it all out. So that's why we use mysterious music. And um, what, what was your experience working at the trial? Were you one of the few people then that supported Michael, and now a lot more do? When we covered the <coughs> um, when we covered the 2005 child molestation trial, um, I felt alone. <laughs> um, not very many media people thought that Michael was innocent, and I did. And um, now I feel alone because not very many media people even consider the facts that the fact that this could be a hoax. So we're not sure yet. Uh, um, uh oh. Oh, oh my shoe. <laughs> so her, her high heel got caught in the elevator. That's no fun. Sorry. <laughs> um, I know there's one theory that Michael is a music slave. Like, how might that be? Someone has him like in a cellar making music for him, or how? I don't necessarily believe that one. So sorry, apologize. Sure. Yeah, so how would you compare this trial to the 2005 trial? Well, in 2005, it seemed like um, there were more people that were against Michael Jackson uh, than there are now. It seems like now there's more people, especially in the media, that are for Michael Jackson. So uh, I see an image change that has happened with Michael Jackson that now he's being re-imaged. More and more people are knowing that he was not a child molest molester. More and more people are coming up front saying there's no way that they ever believed that Michael was a child molester, even though they were quiet during Michael's darkest hours during the trial. And now I see a lot of the media and everybody else saying that Dr. Murray is guilty and leading towards that and saying that Michael Jackson is uh, a victim here. Now some people say, uh, well many people say, and I would agree, that the media in 2005 portrayed him as guilty in order to make money and have higher ratings. Do you think possibly they're portraying him as innocent now to still make money and have high ratings? Well, yeah. <laughs> I mean, once the announcement came down that Michael died, he's been a money machine. He's generated over a billion dollars in sales of his products, his image, and, um, and his catalog has all made lots of money. So the media right now knows that Michael, which they may have not realized before this, that he really is someone that can generate uh, uh, um, revenues and he is a business in and of itself. He is a revenue generator just as, as himself either singing or as a person or as a human being, his personal life, his public life, his kids, his music, his videos, his humanitarian efforts, all generate a lot of public, um, a lot of public awareness. People are just interested in Michael Jackson. Um, now, which are the believers and which are the non? What, what does it mean? Um, a believer? believer is someone who believes that Michael Jackson hoaxed his death, and a non-believer is someone who believes that Michael Jackson is dead. And it's like the whole Elvis thing all over again. Some people say it's hurtful to the kids if people talk about he may have hoaxed his death. Do you have any thoughts about that? Um, you know, uh, Lisa Marie. Presley was asked that question, was she hurt by the Elvis death hoax, and her answer was no, because she knew the truth. So um, it seems like Michael's kids are very well adjusted. They seem happy. They seem as normal as normal can be. I don't see, I see them handling the situation with grace, style, a smile on their face. They seem like very happy, well-adjusted children. 
Um, any thoughts about how the children were kept hidden from public view up until the time Michael died and now the grandmother has kind of a different approach? Well, that's kind of interesting because a week before the announcement that Michael Jackson had died, um, Michael allowed the kids to be photographed, which a lot of fans say that was a sign of what was to come. Um, they were in the studio parking lot and they were walking and no mass, no nothing, right with Michael Jackson. So a lot of the believers believe that that was uh, Michael letting us know that he's approved of the kids uh, being out in the public. And how do you feel about it? I think it's way over time. I think uh, the kids wore those masks for way too long. Um, I just, I thought it was, eventually this was going to happen. I mean, they can't be 30 years old wearing masks, you know, and they can't be teenagers wearing masks either. So it was coming no matter what happened. The kids had to be unmasked. And it's kind of nice that we can live and breathe Michael through his kids, even though he's gone. Would you agree? Yeah, sure, of course. You know, Paris was just at the um, Michael Forever tribute wearing a thriller jacket, and, or a beta jacket, well, a red jacket. <laughs> that was indicative of Michael. And when Prince goes out on um, public um, events, he wears the Michael armband which is indicative of Michael, and he even wears some of his, uh, his attire that was made famous. So yeah, the kids come out and they, they represent their father and they, they love him and they want to keep his legacy alive. And that's what I think, they want to keep his legacy alive and I don't think that Michael would want to be forgotten no matter what. And when it comes down to a death hoax, I mean Elvis had one, you know, so Michael gets one. <laughs> Catherine is doing a fabulous job raising those kids, yes yeah. she is. How do you think the estate is doing? I think the state is doing a good job, a great job of keeping Michael's legacy alive and making money. And uh, because, you know, it is called show business. <laughs> this has been Larry Nimmer reporting in downtown Los Angeles at the Conrad Murray trial.